Today, I'm excited to share with you my new favorite opening for white, which arises from the first standard opening moves. But after that, after we go into the most classical position, instead of playing the Italian game or the Rue Lopez, we're gonna go for the so-called the Goring Gambit. And after black captures this pawn, you, you offer the other one to capture for black. And the idea here is that thanks to this little pawn sacrifice, you're achieving a very active position with a lot of attacking opportunities. And in a couple minutes, I'm going to share with you the special trap that we're preparing if you ever encounter Magnus Carlsen so that you can defeat him. For real, stay tuned. Now, um, actually, even Stockfish can tolerate this gambit. It says that uh, the position is about equal, which is nice, because usually Stockfish is materialistic, so it says, hey, I'm a pawn up, I'm going to win. But in this case, uh, he's not as optimistic for black. And you want to just quickly develop your pieces and go for an attack, and you win. That's it. It's very simple, very aggressive, and hard to deal with for black. For example, what is black going to do right now? If black tries playing symmetric move, knight of six, kind of like the four knights game, there's actually a problem. Because you can now push in the center with a move point five and challenge this knight right away. You can go forward, you already control these squares. Moving back to g8 is just way too passive, so probably black will try knight g4. From here it also attacks the pawn. And there are different ways to handle this for white, but the move I love the most is just bishop c4. By the way, it's worth remembering that in pretty much all the variations of the Goring Gambit, you're gonna develop this bishop right here to c4. And you're taking aim at black's most vulnerable square, f7, and from there, you're ready to hit the king. So bishop c4. Of course, black will be happy to grab this pawn, and that's what they do, and after that, they trade, they attack your bishop on c4, looks like black is just winning. But it's actually the opposite. After queen e2, it's time for black to resign because of this pin, and you just win this knight for nothing, and you continue your attack. If black defends this knight somehow, you still play pawn f4, and you attack it anyway because it can't run away, it is pinned. The only way to neutralize the pin would be playing queen e7, and that's what most of your opponents will play. But this actually makes things worse for black, because now, you're going knight d5, hitting the queen, hitting the c7 pawn, from there you're gonna attack also the king and the rook, you're attacking everything, so that only helps you. In order to defend this pawn and the queen, the only move would be queen d6, but now you come back to your original plan, pawn f4, and you win the knight because of this pin. So that's how you completely demolish black in just a couple moves with this goring gambit, and black was playing seemingly normal moves. Alright, now let's take a look at the most common way for black to handle this. Instead of knight of 6, which we know does not solve black's problems that easily, most of your opponents will go bishop b4. Black is a pawn up, so they don't mind trading pieces. And uh, overall, this is an active development, so things are looking nice. We still go bishop c4, as always. Here your opponents will usually take here on c3 sooner or later, because right now the knight is pinned, but as soon as you castle, and move your king away, the knight will be free to jump to, let's say, d5 at some point, and from there it's gonna hit the bishop as well, and will be a very annoying piece anyway. And therefore, usually, again, sooner or later, black trades here on c3. After that, they go pawn d6. They're still worried about you pushing the center with e5 if they try to develop in their knight, so they firstly play pawn d6. And now, looks like things are under the control for black. But you play queen b3. We're a pawn down, so we do want to play more aggressively, and from here, we continue this simple attack of the f7 square. Black goes queen e7 to defend it, and potentially it also attacks this pawn on e4, but that's not a problem, we simply castle. We are happy if black takes this pawn on e4, because if that happens, you, you can always play rook e1 and win a lot of material thanks to this pin. So queen takes e4 is not an option for black, but there are many other ways for black to go wrong just as well. For example, if I'm not mistaken, the most played move here in this position is actually knight a5, which is completely wrong. Black thinks that this is a fork, and well, it is a fork, but it just doesn't work, because you play queen b5 and you counter this fork with the counter fork. Uh, or rather a double attack. So here you attack the king and the knight. The only way for black to defend the knight would be to move it back, meaning that this maneuver knight a5 c6 was just a complete waste of time, and now it's your turn to play, and you can, let's say, push e5 and just start your attack. So knight a5 was the move in the wrong direction. Let's put it back. So knight a5 is wrong. Instead, black should probably play knight of 6 a normal development move. And now we strike in the center of the move pawn e5. That's a very common way for you to transition into the attack, and it's worth noticing this move, pawn e5. Want to open up the e-file, because black has their 
king and queen, most valuable pieces. And if we can manage to open up the e file, we're gonna put our rook there and start hitting them. And black is gonna suffer. For that reason, lots of your pawns will capture here, which is a deadly mistake because that opens up this new diagonal for your other bishop to hit the queen, and we're still threatening this pawn on f7. And now black is in big trouble. Also, your bishop from a3 cuts black's king off so it can't castle anymore. But right now, black's gonna do something about the queen. So, queen goes here. After that, we still play rook d1, drive the queen away, and as it goes somewhere, it doesn't really matter. Bishop takes f7, it's just a checkmate, literally. Once again, black played all the common moves, all normal moves, all the time, and you completely destroy blacks within several moves. So that just goes to show you the power of the Goryan Gambit. And again, of course, if you turn on Stockfish, it'll tell you, like, come on, no problem, black can defend it. It's kind of true, but, you know, your opponents are not Magnus Carlsons, and they're, they're not going to play perfect moves all the time. That's what their opponents, your opponents are going to play you know, much more often, and you're just going to win. Now we're approaching the most exciting moment of the video where I'm gonna reveal to you the trap that we are preparing against Magnus Carlsen so that you can win. Before that, just a quick note, I do understand that probably you're gonna have a hard time remembering all these variations that I'm sharing with you, but don't worry, because first of all, your opponents don't know any of them anyway, so you're already having an upper hand. Secondly, uh, you do need to know how to learn to find attacking moves on your own without just relying on memorizing these specific moves that I'm sharing with you. If you want to learn how to develop that attacking style of playing, I do recommend that you attend my free masterclass after watching this video where I break it down in details how you can become a powerful attacking player. Alright, now let's get back to our stuff. I just got it back a couple moves uh, where it's one of the most critical positions of the Goring Gambit. Uh, we know that pawn takes e5 is really a losing mistake after that bishop a3 hitting this queen hitting this pawn is just an overwhelming attack for you so here uh if you're facing magnus carlson he's gonna capture here with his knight and that's the right approach for black what's the difference well now after knight takes and pawn takes and you still play bishop a3 black has uh, the way to escape instead of moving the queen away black can block the diagonal by playing pawn c5 and that's certainly a lot better for black you still want to keep attacking, that's your plan. You are sacrificing already two pawns at the moment, so you do want to keep harassing black. Bishop b5, check to the king. Now if bishop covers, we take it. You want to keep playing force and moves. Uh, now, definitely black does not want to expose uh, their king. Uh, and if the knight takes, the annoying thing is that queen takes b7, hit the rook, puts some pressure over here, and this gives you a lot of compensation. With the proper move, play, black can equalize it, but still, they, they have to find a lot of... Uh, correct moves to even achieve that equality. Uh, a more natural move is just capturing here on d7 with the queen. In that case, yeah, things seem to be pretty good for black, but bishop takes c5, still cuts the king off and it can't castle. Black will play knight e4, trying to drive this bishop away, but you drive it back to a3, maintaining this control so that black still cannot castle. And here is a trap for Magnus. By the way, don't share this opening, uh, this video with Magnus, of course. Black's got to move knight d2, which looks winning. It hits the queen, hits the rook. And it looks like you just played some dubious opening, and Magnus is punishing you for that. But okay, you play queen before. Now knight takes f1, winning the exchange. And now you win with the mouse slip. You're moving your rook, but instead of capturing the knight, you just drop it here on d1, and that wins. <laughs> and that's a really evil and really high-level trap that is extremely difficult to oversee for black. What's the idea? Well, you attack the queen, and if the queen captures it, although you have just a few pieces left, that's more than enough. This queen is own is a spectacular checkmate. <laughs> Isn't it nice? But even if Carlson notices it at this time, there is just no escape anyway. So rook d1 hits the queen, and black needs to prevent you know your queen from coming here to e7. So the only move would be queen e6, but now queen b5, and that's again nearly a checkmate. This is check, this diagonal is under the control of the bishop, and the rook takes off this file. So queen c6 would be the only move, but now we can take this pawn, hitting the king once again, Queen e6 is the only move. And now you even, you know, you don't want the draw against Carlson. You could play queen b5 back and just continue giving checks with a perpetual check, but you're not satisfied with it anymore. You take here on g7 and you grab this rook on the next move and you win. So that's how you defeat Magnus Carlson. And uh, yeah, the glory about your victory will always be with you forever. Okay, now let me share with you an another also very useful variations. 
Uh, some of your opponents will figure out that things are getting dangerous for black and they'll opt for playing the most solid way, pawn d6, just to try to keep everything under control. As, you, as always, you go bishop c4, knight f6, and black is ready to play bishop e7 and to castle, but we don't want to give them so easy life, so we play queen b3, once again, creating a threat to this pawn. And uh, it's not easy for black to defend it, because black has to play some awkward move with the queen, which will block the development of other pieces, let's say queen e7. That's the most common move, after that you castle, so as soon as this file can be opened, we do want to castle, because that not only puts our own king to safety, but that also prepares our rook to go there, and to start hitting along the e-file. Now, most of your opponents, according to the database, will play this common error 95. And if not, again, it's not that easy actually for black to figure out what to do, because if not knight a5, then what? You know, you have a lot of things to play here. Bishop g5 here, knight d5, you know, maybe the other knight can go to g5 and, you know, attack the f7 square that way. You have a lot, and this central thrust to pawn e5, you've got a lot of attacking options. And it's completely unclear what should black do now. If knight a5, we already know that it fails to this check to the king and attack the, off the knight, Therefore, then I will have to go back here to c6. After that, you keep attacking as usual. Knight g5. We're renewing the threat to this pawn. The knight on c6 is pinned, it can't move. The only way for black to defend this pawn is to play bishop e6. Now we trade this bishop and we win with a very spectacular shot bishop a6, deflecting this pawn and therefore undermining the knight. So, for example, if the pawn takes, there is just queen takes c6, attack of the king, and you win the rook, and, and the game. That's really cool. But, again, there is no way for black to defend anyway. If black castles, which is the most common move, I believe, in that case you win with another beautiful shot. Queen takes c6, we're taking advantage of this pin, and therefore the queen cannot be captured. If pawn takes here, which is the only move, now you've got a lot, I mean, simply queen takes a6, and you go after this king, something like bishop b3, you know, and you should win this fairly easily, you're just having a free attack against a completely exposed kid and black has nothing. If you're enjoying this, don't forget to subscribe, not miss out on the next uploads. The masterclass that I mentioned uh, earlier is over there in the corner. And thank you very much for watching, I do hope that you'll win a lot of spectacular games using this new Goring Gambit.